Hello everybody and welcome back to the Transgroom TV channel. Today I'm going to groom Jack and I'm very proud to groom Jack because Jack is a son of Harry and Harry was our standard poodle. Unfortunately Harry left us a few years ago. But we're very lucky to have Jack. Jack comes to the office every single day so we see a part of Harry in him. He's a very crazy dog, our Jack. He jumps at everybody, he's overexcited and he's born in 2010. So now he's about eight years old. We're going to groom him today in a teddy bear clip and I'm looking forward to show you everything. First of all, I would like to show you how dirty this dog is. He's not been washed in six weeks and when you open the coat, it was little white dots. And when you look closely to the dog, actually he's not black anymore, he's white, he's grey. And the grey colour and the little white bits is actually the oil he produces. In other words, talc. And um, so we're going to have to wash him very thoroughly to get rid of all this. His ears are also very greasy and um, he has a lot of hair in them. So I prefer to use a few products to do the ears to make sure all goes well and his ears are nice, squeaky clean and he doesn't get any infections. I like to first of all pull the coat with powder and the powder has a disinfectant in it and it's very grippy and you can very easily with two finger condoms the surrounding of the ear take all the hairs out and then the rest of the ears which are left which are come from deep inside which I can't grip with my finger condoms I like to use a tweezers so after all the ears are clean and all the hair is out I like to use the ear care the Showtech ear care and I just hold the ear very tight and I pour the product in, I wait a few seconds and then I slowly massage the ear. And then I like to use the ear wipes to the surroundings and inner, I put my finger in them and inner I can take a lot of dirt out. And then deep inside I like to use the ear Q-tip. Uh, the bamboo sticks actually and they are very big and they are very soft inside and they absorb a lot of grease and dirt and and then uh, the ears are squeaky clean and of course after I'm finished with the tweezers I also very much like to disinfect my tweezers with the ear care because this containing everything I need to disinfect it Clipping nails. <laughs> Before you start, please make sure you have three things with you. One, your nail clipper, two, a piece of paper, and three, the stop bleed powder. Always within reach. For the larger breeds, I love to use the Showtech guillotine. The guillotine is a very good nail clipper. It uh, makes, you can clip like millimeter by millimeter, and you can go by this you can go from long nails to short nails without any pressure. I don't like it when you have the nail you have to put pressure on it first and then it like breaks off. No, this guillotine is so sharp you can slice off little pieces at a time and it's not uncomfortable for the dog. It's important to clip the dog nails as short as possible for their comfort. But if you accidentally go too short, you take your piece of paper and you push it on, onto the nail with a firm push. You grab your stop bleed powder and you push the nail into the pot. And then you push your thumb against to the nail to firmly close the blood. Let's do some foot clipping. <laughs> I will only clip the pads because Jack is going to go in a teddy bear clip and to do the pads it's very easy I'd like to take the out outer fingers and then I can easily scoop out all the hair between the pads and today I'm using the style midi trimmer from Heiniger this is one of my favorites it's a very good clipper it's silent it doesn't make a lot of noise it's not vibrating very much and it's very light and it's very handy to have in your hands. Let's do some bathing. Today I'm going to use the Grumex 
power bathing pump system. And I'm going to do this because Jack is very dirty and I really want to make a point and show you, you don't have to rub a dog to get him clean. But because he's so dirty, I'm going to have to do three washings. But three times I'm going to use the power bathing system and I'm not going to rub at all. I'm just going to use the pump system and let the pump do its work. You don't need a lot of shampoo. And many people say the system is dirty because the dirty water goes back onto the dog. But actually what counts is the active ingredients in the shampoo. And if you think about what we do with our washing machine or with our dishwasher, it's the same thing. Actually, when you rinse, that's the time that the dirty water goes away together with the dirt and the grease and it's all fine as long as you rinse properly. Because Jack deserves one of the best shampoos there are. I'm using Fraser Essential Squeaky Clean. For the second bath, I'm going to use the big volume and then I'm going to use the big volume conditioner. These shampoos are very high concentrated. They are concentrated 1 to 30. In the pump system, depending on how big your bath is, I use normally two tablespoons of shampoo and then I mix it or the pump mixes it with the water. I started just in the round circular movements showering the dog and I let the pump system do the job. As you can see the water is milky, it's brown and um, it's really really dirty. I like to do the head the last bit. You never know if there's a little particle of shampoo going to, to the eyes so I like to do the head. I like to start doing the body for the first washing and then the last bit I wash is the head. And then I start rinsing and I start rinsing with the head. And I repeat this. That was the first washing. As you can see, the water is very dirty. And because it's so dirty, in between I'm going to have a little rinse. Because I'm sure in this thick, long coat, there's still a lot of dirt in. So at least then that's disappeared. I won't rinse for very long, but a, a nice rinse. For the second washing, I'm just going to repeat the same thing I did with the first washing. I'm going to fill up the bath about this high, about one big finger high, so the pump can work. And then I'm using two spoons of Fraser Essential Shampoo. And then I am just go over the dog and let the pump system do its job. As you can see, the water is still dirty, but much less. And I'm not very sure about the results, so that's why I gave him a third time. And the third time I am using the Fraser Essential Big Volume Shampoo. The same system, with the pump, with the water. I would also like to present to you Gloria Torrein. Gloria is working for us since four years now, and she's in her last year grooming school. So Gloria is studying to be a groomer. She's very passionate about dogs. She has many dogs of herself and she likes to help us also doing the videos. So you will see Gloria using the conditioner. Uh, today we're using the Fraser Essential Big Volume Conditioner and we need this for Jack because Jack has a lot of hair. It's quite soft his hair and this is an ideal conditioner to use for poodles. This fantastic conditioner will close the hair follicle and therefore you will have a much easier and faster drying process. I'm a fan of the magic towel. The magic towel can get tons of water out of the coat in no time at all. Every time you use it, it soaks up a lot and you just twist it and after using, you can just rinse it and dry it. I really like to use the magic towel. So the way to get this dog dry very quickly is to use a dryer with a lot of volume. And for me, the dryer with a lot of volume is the K9 Power Blaster. I like to, in the bath, first of all, uh, go around with the Power Blaster and I use about four fingers 
away from the skin and I do it a bit everywhere so most water flies out of the coat. So once most of the water is out of the skin and coat we put the dogs on the table and then continue but then instead of a bit of everywhere I usually start at one place for example on top of the back and go downwards and this way little by little I keep on blastering until it's dry. You can work very good with the power blaster and you can make sure the coat is straight as it can so you don't have to really do a lot of brushing afterwards. The secret to all that is making sure if you use the power blaster you use it on one spot until the coat is totally dry and straight. If you then go to another spot it's okay, it, the, the, the coat will stay straight. If you go to another spot while your first spot is still humid, because of the humid it won't stay straight, it will still all shrimp into each other and you will have curls again. So keep blasting until totally dry and then move to another spot. And you need to make sure by moving circular movements or innate movement you don't forget any spots. Here you will see that the coat is squeaky clean. You won't have one bit of white anymore and if you look at the color of the dog you will see it's more black than it was before. Before it was like a grey shine to it because all the dandruff and all the, the, the grease and, and you know the talc and now you can see it's nice black and when you open it you won't see any bits or dandruff anymore. Mission accomplished for washing Jack without rubbing with the power bather system. Okay, after drying with the force dryer we still have to do some brushing. And the best thing you can do is brushing with warm air. Not too warm, but just warm enough. If there's still some curls or some places where it's not totally straight, you can straighten all the hairs. Today I'm using a test brush. It's like a doggy style, doggy man style brush. And it's very fine and very soft. And I'm seeing if I can get all the latest curls out of the coat. And it's working very much very good. So the secret to this is you take the dryer and you hold the dryer about 20 centimeters maybe and you brush actually where the hair goes open so you then see like a white star and you have to make sure this white star is also everywhere on the dog so when you are doing the head you have to like turn the head around and make sure this white star everywhere and in the meantime you are brushing. This process of brushing is so very important, maybe the most important because if you have if you want to scissor you need to comb through the coat without any resistance so each hair on that dog needs to be straightened and well washed and this is actually the fundament of a good grooming, good scissoring. If you want to have a nice scissoring finish you need to do the fundament and the, your fundament here is the washing and the drying. As you can see here I'm doing the feet and um, it's very important especially in this case because this is a teddy bear clip and sometimes there's hairs between the toes so I don't know if you've noticed but also with the power bather pump I have very nicely washed out between the toes and I have even sprayed between the pads and now with my dryer I'm putting the dryer on the toes and slightly going towards upwards so it's actually against the hair growth and I'm nicely pulling also this part all the hair is very straight. About this dryer I was just surprised because I had tried to count. It's actually 39 years ago that I had my first dryer and my first dryer I ever had was a speedy dryer. And it's a story I know, but stories are nice. So when I was 15 years old, I went to America the first time to Intergroom. I made the competition. I went to the speedy dryer stand and I bought myself a dryer. And this nice gentleman, David, said to me, well, you know, if you like, I'm coming to Europe. I'm coming to Nuremberg, the show in Germany. 
So I was like 15 years old and I bought this dryer to be picked up in Nuremberg. So when I got home as a 15 year old, I told my parents I bought this dryer in Germany and you're gonna have to go there and pick it up. So, you know, my parents are still st telling me this story. Now, anyway, after 39 years, I have to say this dryer is still my favorite. I like this dryer very much because the nozzle where you turn, it's very easy to turn, it turns always. It's got a good air volume and I just like it as well because now it has big wheels on it and it's sturdy, it's, it doesn't need a lot of attention or service. It keeps on going and I just like that dryer very much. Let's do some clipping. So here um, I'm very lucky with Jack because he was been with us since he was a puppy and we taught him to lie down to wash and not to wash to, to dry and um, it's very easy if you want Jack to lie down to do things so I was doing his genitals and um, it's very easy he just lies down and I like to do this with the Heinegger. This trimmer has variable lengths available from 0.5 to approximately 2 millimeters, and I do the face and the genitals always at the longest stand. I love scissoring, but if I can save some time with less scissoring and modeling, I will. So today I'm using the universal combs, and using universal combs it's a fantastic thing to use if your preparation is well done. Always use a 30 blade using these universal combs and I always look at the side of un the universal comb to see the length I wish. Here you can very nicely see from there to there which length you will have after you've finished clippering. Using the universal combs it's very easy. You just go over the dog and you try to always follow the way the hair grows. You can actually also go against but not crosswise, if you understand what I mean. If you have long hair and you go sideways, you will have lines. So to make sure it's very clear, I'm using the 22 millimeters on the whole body. Also on the legs, so I see where the legs start. I see, you know, um, not the legs, the shoulders, the neck and everything. And then I start to see the lines, the outlines of the dog, the profile of the dog. And then I take a shorter blade. And in this case, it's the 16 millimeters. So with the 16 millimeters, I'm starting to style the dog more. So more uh, the neck needs to be shorter and here at the shoulders. And I'm even taking now a shorter one to make the tummy shorter because I don't like much hair on the tummy. It's less scissor work as well. And it's not necessary because it's like in this teddy bear clip. And uh, as you can see here, I'm going against direction of the coat growth at the tummy and that's also no problem. And then I'm switching again to 10 millimeters, that's actually one centimeters, because if you can see the dog, he has like a, 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 a back which is going down a bit. And so at his back, back of his back, uh, I'm going all straight and with this centimeter. So you can style actually in different lengths with the universal combs. You just have to be careful to remember that now you have a shorter one and you don't suddenly go in the half of the back and you make it too short. So here I'm styling, I'm actually like using these universal comb as scissors and I'm giving already a bit of a line at the back. So now his back is a bit straighter, as you can see, his top line. And I think it's time to do some scissoring now. Choosing the right scissor is actually very simple. They have to work, they have to do the job. And if you don't, if you can't do the job with one scissor, just take another. And if it's a straight or a curved or a blender or a chunker, just make sure that you are happy and that you can do the job that needs to be done. To scissor Jack, I've used mainly five scissors. One is the Yento Ergoline 17 centimeter scissor. I use this for the feet and for the rounding of the feet. 
Then I've used the Utsumi uh, 8 inch, that's 20 centimeter handmade scissor, it's a yo. Uh, this is a very good scissor, it's light, it's Japanese steel for small jobs, for you know, like styling and modeling, I like this scissor very much. If I wouldn't have used the universal combs, I would have used this scissor. This is the, the Yo handmade scissor uh, for Otsumi, it's 21 centimeters. And this scissor is a very, very strong scissor. You see it because it's got wide blades. It's also a handmade scissor. The Otsumi Yo King actually has a very good handle to it. It's very a comfortable handle. And this scissor will go through any type of coat. So if you have a Kerry Blue Terrier or a standard poodle, and if you have problems to really enter the coat with a scissor, this is the scissor you need. And then the handmade also Yo Utsumi 9 inch, that's 22 centimeters. This is the scissor I use for long legs or in between the legs or difficult to reach places. It's also a light scissor. It has very fantastic sharp long blades. So you can do much a big spot with it with one time opening and closing. And then for the chunker, the Yento Ergoline chunker is my favorite chunker. You can style with it, you can model with it, you can cut with it. Uh, it just goes forever, it's sharp, uh, it's a very good scissor, it, it's a comfortable handle and you can use it for ages. Okay, uh, so scissoring. Um, teddy bear feet, it's very 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 easy, just comb down and go around and make sure the bottom of the feet are not too short and nice and round. I always like to go at the front of the feet, foot first, I take where the front toes are and then I do the back and then I round them. Uh, I'm lucky because Jack has very nice round feet but mini poodles have like a triangle feet and if you just follow the foot of the dog you will have like a triangle. So that's why I always do first the front, then the back, and then I do the sides, I round them up. With a curved scissor or a straight scissor, it's actually the same thing. In this case, I'm using the curved scissor, which is actually uh, strange for me because I don't use a lot of curves, but I decided to use the curves here because it's really curved, <laughs> a really curved foot. And I also like to do the feet first before I do anything else because when I do the feet, I see where I am, I see where the dog, where the dog's feet are, or, you know, fingers, and then when I go upwards, I can make a straight line from the shoulder to the toes. And I like to use this comb. Today I'm using the Utsumi comb, and uh, it's just a fantastic comb. The Utsumi comb has a very good finishing to it. It's very chromed. And um, this comb is just a fantastic comb to use. It's, the pins are very narrow to each other and because of the narrow pins, each time you comb, you separate each hair and every single hair is straight and at the end you have a very nice scissoring finish. I'm trying to make the feet conical so they are at the top of the leg a bit shorter than at the bottom to create this conical look. So, scissoring is much the same thing. I like to just make sure that the comb is just as much use, used as the scissors and I comb not the top of the hair, I just go right down with the comb until the comb hits the skin and then I turn it upwards and this way in circular movements I have every time I lift up the hair and I comb and I scissor and then I lift up the hair again and scissor again and lift up and scissor and lift up and scissor and here you see me using the chunkers I'm using the chunkers because I really want the shoulders to be short and because of the hair is like thick and, and a very thick coat and sometimes it's a very nice way to model or style 
So if you are, you know, like you like scissoring and you can't like get the line into it or you can't mold the style you want, just switch from normal scissors to chunkers, carry on and you will see it's easier to style with chunkers. Once you, you find your line, you can still then put your chunkers aside and still comb and scissor and, and finish it with the normal scissors. Here you see me using the Fraser Essential Big Volumizing Spray. This is a good spray for scissoring, especially big legs. You know, sometimes you have big long hair and they fall like down all the time and it's nice if you spray this spray. You spray, you lift it and it like shines up the points and you see exactly which point still needs working on. So um, I don't use it all the time, but at the end where you nearly say you, you, you have the line and you need to do the finishing, I really like to use this spray. I don't really like to lift up the feet or the, the legs very much, especially to be sure that the line, the legs are always straight from straight down, so they're not like a banana or they're not crooked. Uh, I like really when I'm grooming the legs, I like to keep the legs on the table and me going up and down with the scissors. I rarely will take the feet and lift them to do work. But, of course, to do the, the tummy or where the tummy starts, it's very easy to lift up the front leg and then follow from the chest to the line for the tummy. So you have a circular line. And before I made a little line at the, at the tummy and also at the sides, so I see where the leg actually starts. So I always do the front first because for me the balancing in the front is more important and also more difficult to balance the whole dog. And if I do the back leg legs first, I don't get this balance correct. So a long time ago, I did the front first and for me poodle grooming, the front is always done first. So that's my way. And now for the head, I'm going very short until approximately where I hold my hand and everything upwards is like the head and everything downwards is like the neck. It's a very easy line to remember, also for scissoring. You can hold your scissor like this and you know it's, it's there. So once I have this line at the head, I'm now doing the line in the eyes. So I like it when it's short here. So next to the eyes, very short, so I'm, I'm not afraid to comb everything down and to make this spot really short. And then I'm going to comb everything up and do this line. Jack is such a good boy. <laughs> he's so good when he's alone. When he has to be groomed for a seminar, or groomed at a grooming competition, Jack is not a good boy because he loves everybody and he gets excited to everybody and everything that happens around him, he's so excited, he's, oh, he's like still like he was a puppy. <laughs> so here I'm trying to hold his nose horizontal and I'm trying to make sure behind his ears it's like sh a little shorter and I'm trying to get also the top line not too long, not too short, nicely balanced because it's quite easy because I've used uh, universal combs. The only thing I have to watch now is that the top line is not like going down and then back up. I like it when the neck is the neck and then the back of the dog is going straight. So it's not to follow the totally surrounding of the outline of the dog it's you know you have to even though I use the universal combs still make some styling and make sure the shoulder is short and you know the side of the neck is short and then the back is straight and now because it's easier for me I've put the dog on the ground to finish his top line and his neck to see where to scissor at a certain point or what I look at, is uh, it's very easy. I look at the outline all the time. This means that this is a bottle, but 
you and me, we see both a straight line. We see a line here and a line here. But you see, this bottle is round. So my view about creating style in dogs is I'm also, I'm always scissoring at the outline. It means if I want to scissor this part, I have to twist myself and scissor that part over here. If I want to scissor my front part, I have to also do this and do that. So I won't touch this part or this part if I'm not viewing it at the right view. So for me, that's very important. It's also one of the reasons why many people uh, can't sit down while grooming poodles. If you sit down grooming poodles and you don't have the correct view and you're not so experienced, it's uh, very difficult if you are sitting down to, you know, lie yourself around the dog and uh, lie, curl yourself around the legs of the dog with your scissors and view it at all times if you are sitting down. So the ears, I won't actually take them up to do the whole part. I'm just, uh, I just took them up to do the, the, the part that is on the back of the ear. The front of the ear, I didn't touch. And um, I'm just now viewing, combing, uh, letting the ear fall naturally and trying to fit it in with the head. I'm also going to now comb all the hair of the ears down and do the outline of the ear and then at a certain point I'm gonna comb all the hair up and also go over the ears. Yes, now here you see it, the hair up and then scissoring. And then a small part on the nose I'm doing with the trimmer so it's really neat and afterwards you can just brush or comb everything to the front and scissor it flat so it's nice and tidy and then you see between the lip and the nose a little bit of skin and it's clean. I'm also combing all the hairs from the moustache quite forward and then scissoring everything nice clean away. It looks like Jack is falling asleep He's really a very good dog to groom. I wish Jack was behaving like this in a live demo. I have a problem because Jack is now, now nearly eight years old, coming nine actually, and uh, his hair is very soft. So I like to use, make sure that when the hair falls down, it doesn't have a, like a line showing. So now I'm just gonna leave the head and leave the hair for maybe 10-15 minutes, see what the hair does and afterwards I'll go back to the head and go over it again. And eventually the last thing I'm going to do is use some lac, some hairspray to make sure it's nice and upward. And then when the head is done I'm going to for sure finish the top line, the whole back of the dog, so that's as straight as possible. And then we're good to do the back legs. And since the, the top line is for me a very important part, I don't mind spending as long as it takes or I will spend as long as it takes to make it straight. For me the back line, the line from the tail to the neck is very important. I like to see a neck and I like to see the back of the dog. So the back is straight and then slightly it goes up. Where it goes up is depending how long the neck hair is. If the neck hair is very long and you can pull the net, neck hair up and backwards until halfway uh, the shoulders, then the top line can start there. But it's very important to me that the top line is the back is straight and then you see the neck and you don't see like a bubble or you see a hanging back because here we are with a poodle. You can grow as much or as little hair you need, so at least you can scissor a straight line. And if it doesn't go with normal scissors, use the chunkers or use whatever scissor you need. For making the feet round, my, one of my favorite scissors is the Yento Ergoline 17 centimeters. 
this is very good for feet for for you know for making them round or for cutting the first feet around or you know for any breed I like this scissor very much once I have the curve correct at the feet I will change to my Utsumi 20 cm handmade scissor this is a Utsumi Yo handmade scissor 8 inch to make the angulation in the back I always lift the dog's foot and where the ply is, where he bends, here I make it just short. And when I say short, it's really close to the skin. And then all that part is like flat where the back is. And then um, I, I stand on the to make the angulation on the right, I like stand on the left and look from it from the side, and then where you see where the where it folds, you see the angulation, and then like I follow it around the paws. It's difficult to see in black. <laughs> and now I'm looking also from the back, from the from the front to the back. And this way I also see the angulation nicely and it's then easy to follow the outline of the dog. Actually for me the angulation doesn't come from the buttocks. So the buttocks I always do it short, you know, also nearly to the skin but I make sure the buttocks is like looking a bit of, a bit rounded shall I say. But flat, flat. And then uh, the side of the thighs I make flat as well and then I have like a little corner it's not really a corner but it looks like it but for me the angulation really comes from the hock and not from the buttocks so the, the buttocks for me poodles as short as possible please and I like to look from the front to the back and then I can see the outline and I can see the angulation perfectly from that view and I also like it when you do the legs and you see the back where the angulation goes really short uh, then I the front where the knee is I like to have it parallel so also the front instead of another line I like it where the back goes in the front I also do parallel with that so in the drawing you can see exactly how the angulation is built up so here too it's actually repeating Scissoring, combing, and starting over again. And combing and scissoring. This until after combing, you don't see any hair sticking out anymore. For the inside of the legs, I really like to use the Utsumi handmade scissors Yo. And it's 9 inch, it's 22 centimeters. And this is a great scissor because of the length. Here I'm using the chunkers at the buttocks. And you can see how short it is at certain places, it's nearly to the skin. And styling the legs sometimes is not so simple. You work on the front, you work on the back, and then you're tr trying to create the style, the angulation, and suddenly you, you look up and you say, oh my gosh, the buttocks are really not short enough, so don't worry about it, just go back to them and keep styling. It's the only way you will create a perfect outline and your perfect angulation, which is good for you. So as you can see, I'm going back to the buttocks. Maybe there was still a few hairs too much on the buttocks, but I really... If I must, I must, and if I must go back 10 times to the buttocks to create the buttocks I want, that's what I'm going to do. So, again, I'm going back to the buttocks. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful to see Jack so happy? Here you see him all groomed, all crazy, all happy. It's fantastic to groom dogs, it's fantastic to do something with your passion. I'm very happy, I'm very proud to be a groomer. Now we will show you a few pictures of the final work of Jack. This was Kitty for Transgroom TV. Thank you for watching our videos. And don't forget, if you have any questions, you're very welcome to write them below. We will answer them. And if you like our videos, please give them a thumbs up.